Oh my goodness. Hey. Hey. It's Critic Box time again. Um, how's everyone doing? How's your doing? Uh, we're, we're all doing great. Okay. Um, yeah. We're missing our favorite friend, Sarah, but you Sarah. know. She'll come back to us eventually. That is the life of being busy. And the, that just shows us the industry is picking up again. And that's exactly what we want. Fingers to crossed. See. Fingers crossed, please. Please. Right? Toronto said a dry April. We should, you know, you, dry January is one thing. But a dry April? Mm. Like, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Weather's getting good. We need to be busy. We need to get going. Exactly. So, you know, we're all here just kind of doing our thing. And while we were doing our thing, obviously Hollywood was doing its thing. And it does that. It does its thing a lot, doesn't it? It does. And as crazy as it looks out there, from California to New York to Toronto to Atlanta, Paris, the UK, as crazy as Oof. it looks out there, we're all still doing something. Yeah. We're just going to put the good vibes and the good energy out there that more things will happen to come to do. Yeah, or we're all going to be making big decisions come August. See? See, that's that's the type of talk that we need to have. Mm -hmm. Big decisions coming August. What type of big decisions coming August do you have? Oh, just thinking like, okay, well, since I have a lot more time than acting, uh, maybe I should do learn some other things, get some other skills going, keep right. myself busy. Like? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's that's that's an August problem. That's not now. I I just uh, I don't know. It could be September. It could be October. Who knows? If you if you sign up for those machete classes, just um, give me a call. I will. Um, I would like to come, you know, so I prepare for the post-apocalyptic <laughs> boom, you know. Now, would you prefer a uh, would you prefer a Fallout apocalypse, or would you uh, a Last of Us apocalypse, or a Twisted Metal apocalypse? Which one would you like? Definitely a Fallout apocalypse. Oh, really? Yes, yes. All the radiation and guns. You, you know what? The challenge for me would be making sure that I have enough radiation uh, medication so I don't change. And then yeah. going into the vault and finding out the science experiments that are going into the vault. It's definitely Ooh. a fallout apocalypse for me. Yes. Man, you can be busy. I'm going to be real busy, but they have cool guns and that armor. So. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> you one of those. And you can, you can like lose a finger and then they'll just put another finger on top of there and boop, boop. It so may not match. It's going to be a different not. color, but hey, you, is it better than not having a finger? True, 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 you true. Know? um okay so what we're gonna do is get into some trailers because we okay. we could sit here and talk about fallout all day but we're not Chum. gonna do that we're gonna talk about something that's fallout adjacent which is right. is one Ooh, yeah this one has chris helmsworth and brian tyree henry and scarlett johansson scarlett really? Johansson, we know she's done the superhero big budget movie thing already but uh mm -hmm. and so has chris helmsworth obviously but but um, what about their voice acting? Very different style. Uh, and I'm I'm excited to see what Brian Tyree Henry brings to this. Whole yeah, what is up, he's fun. Fans. Well, this is it, Brian. A trailer is about to drop. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait either. Oh yeah, then let's drop it. Here it comes. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Okay. The Transformers, Transformers one trailer trailers, starts gotcha. now. <laughs> do you want to do it? <laughs> that's good. I like that. I like good. Go on, the Transformers one trailer starts now. So. How long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. You know what? We are so screwed. Thought you weren't talking to me. You two, come with me. Report to waste management. Hi there, I'm V127. I'm actually working on some nicknames. The the one I'm floating right now is um Badassatron, which is actually pronounced Badassatron. Um, we're gonna call you B. <laughs> I know we're just lowly worker bots who can't even transform. Don't you want to see what's out there? There's a reason no one goes to the surface. It's dangerous. Why'd you bring jetpacks? If we survive this, I'm gonna kill you! I accept those terms. Proven yourself yeah. worthy. Take these and access your full potential. 
potential. It's time to show them we are more than meets the eye. We can transform now! On free! What? <gasps> Where's my head? How do we use these things? Oh, look at the wheels! I need wheels! Woo! Uh, guys, that's not good. We've got these powers for a reason. Let's use them. We stand here together. As one. Whoa! Ho -ho! I got a battle mask! It appeared with this guy! Knife hands? I have knife hands! I can see that. B, these are not the bad guys. Why did you cut the door? What? No, it was already like that. Right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes. It was, yeah, yes. it was already mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's right. That was a lot. <laughs> Why, you don't like kids' movies, Sherry? I, I have questions. I just what have a lot think? of, I mean, just the fact that it's a very different vibe from any other Transformers, anything that I've seen. Um, looks fun. It looks fun. I mean, I feel like it's the Transformers that kids are gonna watch, to be honest. Like, it's the eighth installment of the series, and they're not oh, kids anymore. And they're just, they said, forget adults. We don't like you. We're going to focus straight on the kids. And well, it's probably good because if they came out with another, like, an eighth one and it was just like the other ones, like, it'd be like, oh, Transformers, Age of Extinction or something, or Revitalization. You know, like, if they did it the same way, like, uh, that they did, like, the Michael Bay trilogy, like, uh, series did, I, no one's gonna watch it. So, okay, there's a new one. There's a new kind of, like, hey, we're just gonna do it, make an animated one, make it fun, like, a whole bunch of comedy and hijinks and make it for kids. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, if a kid wants to go see it, their parents, they're dragging their parents to the theater. So, I mean, it's a guaranteed at least two tickets. I mean, you know what I'm thinking? Love it. Like, I'm watching it. Four main characters, uh, they're learning their powers and everything, and they got to stop a big, bad, evil thing. This is like Ninja Turtles. Like, this is basically a Ninja Turtles movie, but they're robots. And they transform. Like, ooh, he turns into a semi, which is totally useful on the battlefield. Yeah, <laughs> this one is obviously not going to be as serious as he once was. I mean, it is definitely a turn from what from what they've done before. And yeah, oh, definitely different. We always talk about seeing the same thing over and over again, and not giving people enough creative freedom and not taking risks. This is obviously a risk that is being taken, and they're taking it and they're gearing it towards the kids. And they've done seven movies already that were probably geared towards adults, and God only knows how they did. But if the Transformers name was able to bring enough people to the theater, bring enough adults, bring enough people of a certain age to the theater. So obviously, mm -hmm. like, we're just going to try this again and go back to the roots of what made Transformers work, which is originally it was a cartoon that was on on Saturday mornings. Yeah, and it was a cartoon that was designed to sell toys to kids. Right, and you get Hasbro involved, and Hasbro makes a little cash. I mean, it, it works. It's just because we don't have kids, Jerry. We can't relate. This is true. And um, instead, I get to wake up on Saturday mornings, eat cereal and watch cartoons by myself. And it's great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess we don't understand of like uh, the fact that movie theaters need exist so that parents can have a couple hours while they go do things. Like, Here, go watch this movie. I got to go. I mean, it, it's screen time. That's mm -hmm. It's it could be screen of quality time or it could just be like, yeah, I'm going to go be in the mall. You be in the theater. I'll come pick you up later type thing. I mm -hmm. which way, I mean, if, if the kid is under like seven and under, I, you know, you would hope that there is a parental guidance um, there. Mm -hmm. But otherwise than that, you just you not you just got to let it be what it is. And it is a kid's movie that will most likely be successful because it is geared towards kids. Yeah. 
and kids like what they like and they will watch what they watch and this has a really cool look to it like there's machines it just the- seems yeah it just seems a little weird like they're telling a different movie but they decided to use transformers for it like i feel i feel like a little bit of that like vibe of just like oh we had a cool movie that may or may not be successful well let's just slap transformers on top of it and then boom it's done so you feel kind of betrayed. I, no, I, well, I mean, I've been watching Transformers variations for decades now. And so it's like, this is a very new, different iteration. I mean, if this was Ninja Turtles, yeah, that makes sense. Because they're always like slapstick, like teenagers having fun. But Transformers, I'm like, weren't you guys like soldiers? And then you were sent to Earth? And then you transforming? And again, cool, sports car in the jungle. That makes sense. <laughs> like the, it's, <laughs> it's like the justifying the transforming part. But okay, I mean, cool. I don't know. I think it has a good chance of. I think it has a good chance of like doing big numbers. It could. It could. I. You know, who knows? Like thinking it's a new vibe of comedy. Well, there's a lot of comedic people in the cast. Um, what's his name? From Loki and Peel is in there. Yeah, I saw that. And, and Chris Helmsworth can be considered funny. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I. Keegan Michael Key, that's who I was talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody's going to give this a chance. It may not be geared directly towards us. Obviously, that's clear from both of our reactions, but yep. it's geared towards an audience that most likely has to go to the theater with a plus one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, let's move on to the next trailer. Okay. Let's see what the next one is. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I am excited about this one for mid- for obvious reasons. But anyway. Yes, very much so. Me too. Let's watch. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Lady Raven. Hurry, come on. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. I got time. Mm-hmm. No, that counts. This is serious. Uh, come what is on. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Josh Hardin? That's who it is. Hello. Oh. Like it knows face. Mm. Slap dad. Thank you. Thank you. This is literally the best day of my life. Police trucks outside. The cameras everywhere, Jamie. I'm not supposed to tell. Mm-hmm. Something happening? Don't rat me out. I won't. You know the butcher? The freaking nut job that goes around just chopping people up? Well, the feds or whatever heard that he's gonna be here today. Also, they set up a uh-huh. trap for him. This whole concert? It's a trap. Watching all the exits, checking everyone that leaves. There's no way to get out of here. I'm sorry, Riley. What was that? Your daughter's never gonna forget this day. You're kind of dope, right? Yay! Stream it, theater, skip it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm bringing you back to reality here. Oh my God, you grounded me so hard. Okay. Um. Again, I don't go to the movie theater anymore. So it's really hard for me to be like, yeah, let's go to the theater. You know what? Drive in. If it was, like, it was getting to drive in season, I would absolutely drive in that movie. 
Okay, because I was just like, you, 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 you wouldn't make a set special exception, or you're. You know what? I would. Uh, I'm not gonna. I can say. Um, probably, I could probably say this. Um, anyways, there were a couple days that I was on that set. I will okay. say that. Okay. Okay. I think uh, most of Toronto was. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of Toronto and Hamilton was. Yeah, and I got to play um, like uh, a role on it on set, and then there's also BG a couple times because it for reasons. Anyway. So uh, I made some money on that set, so I'm excited about that movie. Okay, okay, so we'll throw some money back into night sh- Night's Way. Yeah! I'm, I'm excited about that movie because it just doesn't look like what you think it's going to look, and he is just really good at, like, that whole serial killer, psychopathic, sociopathic thing. This is a, this is a new I, Josh, this is new Josh Hart that, you yeah. know? Like, this is, like, I mean, he's been out of the spotlight for a while. Um, I think Sin City may have been one of the last... No, no, he was in Oppenheimer, so never mind. He's, yeah, so he's... He's back. back. Uh, anyway, but uh, but again, like, I would say, yes, a, a good span of like five to ten years where I think he's probably just enjoying life, which don't get. And this seems to be like, hey, again, he was an Oppenheimer, Academy Award winning film, and he played a really good role in that. And he's now playing a psycho in this. <laughs> yes. And he looks the part. He most definitely looks that part. Like that yeah, Josh. where he was smiling and laughing and then, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Yes. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Another yes, reason why I want to see this movie. It's just, you know, I, I love the way Night I, Shyamalan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. because uh, I have, Shyamalan. Shyamalan. I have the greatest respect for this man and his movies mm-hmm. have made me happy many, many a time over. But I just love the the, the subtext about his daughters because the the girl who's actually playing the pop star is his daughter. Yes, I got to see her on set too. Right. And then the pop stars and, and then her song, her hit song in the movie was written by his other daughter. So he's just like, this I saw her really do, yeah. business. This it her, is. And it's really. And, and then it's a movie about a man and his daughter. <laughs> it's just how he, how he weaves these little tales, mm-hmm. stories. And you just you're at the end of the movie. You're sitting back like, did I just see what I saw? Did I think did what I think thought happened happened and you're like yes yes it did and it's it, so cerebral it's and the thing that i like about this and i like about these kind of certain types of movies are it ta- i mean it looks like it's one of those it takes place in one location and a single you know number of hours and it, it, it's not one of those like it's going to move across towns or whatever there might be some flashbacks and stuff like that but it looks like it's like the premise is at this concert it's a trap because trap uh, because um they for some reason i guess we'll find out they'll know they know that you know a serial killer will be attending this concert and their right. cops are coming and snaring it how are they going to get out how do they know he's going to be there like what's he going to do like that kind of a situation like it's i love that locked in kind of a situation kind of how hateful eight was almost like a like you know it was like one location everything's happening kind of a thing so yeah. But he still like messes messes with time, like leading up to it and stuff like that. And so I'm I'm excited to see that just on the premise alone. I mean, okay, so is it the trap that he's trapped? The, the killer guy is trapped. His victims are trapped. Yeah. But and are the police trapped in there with him? Everybody in that crowd is trapped. Yeah. Police are setting you trapped. I, it, it doesn't look like he's gonna Liam Neeson hit, fight his fist fight his way through out of there either. You know, so it's like. Can we not knock Liam? I am not going to knock Liam Neeson, but I mean, we've all know what Liam Neeson's going to do if you lock him in an arena. That's true. I just want to know when it comes to trap, his work is good. It's just always good. And I am just excited to see how this one is going to be good. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are because when that trailer dropped, there was a lot of people online or it was like, yes, yes, we want to see it. It was, it, they were like, it was Alfred Hitchcocky in a way where it gave you the storyline, but it left suspense at the end. So it's just like you're kind of thinking about it, leading up to seeing it. Be like, what could possibly happen if you're into it like that? I, mm-hmm. I, I, I can't speak highly enough. I'm excited for it. I and I hope this is new M Night. You yeah. know, I hope this is like, hey, I'm, I can still do psychological thrillers. You're right, and and the fact that it was shot most it all of it, if not here and in Hamilton. Yeah, Toronto Hampton, yeah. I mean, it was it was a good look for our industry, so here at least, and I'm sure it'll be a good look for M. Night, and 
I, I want to see it. Like, so yeah, that's my major decision in August. So, um, <laughs> theater stream or leave it. Oh, that's definitely a theater. Yeah. That, that's so theater to me. I will be, <laughs> I'll even spring for popcorn on that night. I, I feel Ooh, like. Ooh, you're going to spoil yourself for that. What I am. I am. And maybe even something like, you know, uh, not, no, not, not nachos, but you know, something sweet. I, I think. That would be my little dinner date to myself to the movies. Just you know, VIP tickets, yeah, hiding chairs, AVX, hot, if they have it. hot chocolate that you can pour some, pour your flask into. Whatever, you know? whatever. yeah. Whatever. Okay, we're not going to speak too loudly on that. Treat yourself. I need to know, but you know? <laughs> it is definitely one of those things where, like, for me, it's kind of like a Quentin Tarantino movie. You mm-hmm. know, what I mean? where Quentin Tarantino movies when. He was making movies and releasing them in theatrically on a regular basis. It was one of those films like before you even knew what it was about, just because his name was attached. Oh, yeah. You you were going to the theater to watch when you did go to the theater, Jared. Yes. Back when? (laughs) Back when. Right. (laughs) And it's so it's it's definitely one of those things. But the thing is, Mm -hmm. what's upsetting me about Quentin Tarantino now? Yes. Is that he's decided that he's going to make his tenth and final film, and uh, you know you're going to go out on the bang, and you're going to go out on the high note, and everybody respects what he does, and we love mm-hmm. that. Um, but it's also okay. why ten? Like why is he stopping? I know he's it's, saying because he doesn't want to get he, he doesn't want to get too old and feeble. When everyone's like, are you talking about um, Spielberg? Like are you talking about Scorsese? Like are you saying they are old hacks now and are just producing shit? Because Quentin, you can keep doing this for years. That's true. I don't think he's trying to diss them in a way. I just think he's really just trying to live his life. And I mean, like Sarah and I always have this debate about artistry versus business. I feel like he was one of those filmmakers that was mainly about his artistry before it was ever about the business for him. And oh, definitely, may, most definitely, it may just become a time where he just wants to focus on that, right? Oh, so, he was a movie nerd like, that that picked up a camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of seemed like like he started in a video store. And he's made it all the way to here. Ten seems like a nice round number. Like he's it's okay. Kevin Smith, it yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, he's still going to be doing other things creatively, just not making films. But the thing is, his final movie, which we've been hearing about for years, but that was in development, the movie. Oh, yeah. crit, he wrote it. He submitted it to the studio or whatever. And like, it's not even like he needs to get like approval from them. He just, he's Quentin Tarantino here. Take it. Right. Yeah. But, it's like, uh, hi Quentin. What can we do for you? You got a movie for us. Oh, okay. Here. <laughs> uh, he's apparently changed his mind. And yeah. He says, he's it. He's axed uh, his 10th movie. Right. The movie critic has been hacked. And he said, he's not going to use that as his final movie. And he's, he's going to go in a different direction, which is fine. He fine. Has to fine. Fine. Us- do so and you know what i implore him if this is his last go round, if this is his last round in this arena give us your best okay then yeah I, if you if you don't feel like the movie critic was strong enough then cool what else what, what you got right i just happen to think his best would probably be kill bill three <laughs> the billing the billing oh uh, you know what it could be oh my god is it i think it's been about 20 years i know i'm looking over here like i know um 20 years so in kill bill one Whenever um, she killed uh, Vivica A. Fox's character, her daughter saw it. Just says, hey, if there's every time you feel raw about this, you come find me. You know what could be fucking be? Kill Bill 3. She finds her. Right. Hell yes. We set it up. We, we've we set it up. He set it up. Like, we're, we, you notice how everyone who's watched that movie has remembered and recalled that line. And Do you I know think- how many times I saw it in theaters back when I went to theaters? I, I saw that so many times. I adored the soundtrack, everything about it. And I always remember when I see that thing, whatever. It's like, if in, in sometime in the future you still feel well about this, come find me. I'm like... I really hope that happens. I I still stream Kill Bill one and two to this day. So yes, that's just what it is for me. But I'm just like we the samurai in the in the first one, the western in the second one. The <laughs> people say the second one isn't as good as the first one. Well, the first one is it's, 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 it's anyway. Well, so it's it's good. It's just good in a different way. Exactly. Michael Marsden had you know he had to die, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
it, no, it's just people, it's just, you know, the, the general consensus is if, if you're no longer making the movie critic and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did so great and, you know, Brad Pitt was in it. And I think there was a little bit of confusion because his final movie, the movie critic, was going to bring that character back. And it was going to kind of be like a prequel to that character's life as a stuntman. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to do that anymore, that's fine. You have a whole bunch of people out here that is waiting for a continuation to Kill Bill. And I, and I could see it's because I think it was like originally the movie critic was based off of um, a porn critic uh, from like uh, uh, from a mag uh, from a magazine in the seventies, and he and like Tarantino was fascinated fascinated I would say fascinated by this guy um, yeah. because apparently he lived a crazy life and he died in his late thirties and everything, and so people right. were like, well, who's going to be playing this guy? And people were like Brad Pitt, I'm like Brad Pitt's sixty. You know, like, so how is that going to be? And then once upon a time in Hollywood, if that's going to be a prequel to it, like, how's he going to look younger, you know? And so I think it may have just been like, he wasn't sure how to play that. And for whatever reason, he canned it. But where are you going to go, man? What you got? And this is the pressure I think that he started to feel right now. It's just like, because he's announced that it's his last movie and he kind of feels like a lot of pressure, man. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, everyone thinks that he's just this prolific movie maker, this and whatever he does is absolutely golden. Like, and seeing how it's his last, he feels mm -hmm. like he probably, like, if it's not good, you know, you always want to end on a high note. And if this is not good, I think he'll probably feel that emotionally more than anybody else. Like, it can't be Oof. too artsy to alienate people. It has yes, to Yes, it can. Yes, no, it can. It can't. Quentin it can alienate whoever the hell he wants to alienate if the movie's good. Okay, listen. The Kill Bills were amazing. Reservoir mm -hmm. Dogs was amazing. Hateful yes. Eight, in my opinion, less amazing, but still good. Oh, uh, still good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Inglorious Bastards, massively amazing. Oh, like, yeah. That is the standard he set for himself. Django Unchained. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's, that's uh, the template right. of, of Civil War era movies. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's the standard that he set for himself. Like, you don't want to go out with something that's lackluster or that falls below that. So yeah. he's probably feeling the pressure on himself more than anybody else is putting pressure on him to do it. And when you've set that standard for yourself and then you've set this criteria for yourself, it's yourself that you're battling with the most because everyone knows he writes his own things. Oh, yeah. That man's going to be in his head. And I hope that he still just does whatever he is known to do and he just fights through it and he gets it done and i no pressure on you quentin love you buddy whatever you gotta do ignore anybody else you do it my friend okay he's out here throwing subs y'all i mean <laughs> <laughs> look i'm just saying we got results okay that's the important <laughs> thing whatever happened behind set we got results um and long as nobody gets hurt, long as nobody gets hurt, that's what I'm trying to say. But Pulp Fiction was his too, right? Oh, absolutely, it was his. Right. That was his business card. Res nobody, I mean, not as many people watch Reservoir Dogs until they watch Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and then they went back and watched Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, and for me, it was more Reservoir Dogs and then Pulp Fiction. But I, they just had the reunion for that, and it just looked like a happy reunion with the cast. So yeah. even he kind of does like one of those send out parties where he just brings back everybody he's ever worked with and just gives them parts and and just be like, okay, you do this bit part, you do this bit part, Samuel L. Jackson, you are your. There would be there's a lineup of A list celebrities out the door ready to make a bit part like uh, uh, appearance in a Quentin Tarantino film. Okay, right. get it's behind Samuel. All right, everyone's gonna make appearance in this. Exactly. I mean, especially his last one. Like, if he does something like even like that. And the story doesn't even have to be great in that point. You could do something. It'd be like the Expendables. Like it just, you know, this, then it's the nostalgia that everyone's going to go see because, oh, yeah, Quentin did this and he worked with this guy. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be another Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It, no. does, it doesn't have but to be anything that epic. It could. Um, it, I mean, there's a there's a, a scare that it could be less because he keeps just guest starring all these celebrities for bit part roles, and then you get distracted from the actual story, you know. And so, Quentin, we're here to give you ideas. If you want to set up a writers' room, you can just you know leave a. If you need yeah. under the radar actors that you like people who haven't seen them in any mainstream thing, you know, you just let us know. Right? Okay, we we will help you. We are we're crazy with the pet. We're crazy with the pen, Quentin. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Call me. 
Um, you may not like what I have to ask you about next, but I, I why? Because you don't go to the theaters anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How, just, hold on. I, I'm going to make a, I'm making a vow because there are two drive in theaters within close driving distance of where I live and they play recent movies and there's nothing that can get me out and watch a movie more than it being in a drive in okay. and I can sit in my car and, you know, and enjoy that. Something about that is like a good happy in between where it's like, all right, cool. I'm in a comfortable place and I don't have to, you know. And uh, hear other people talking in a movie theater, and okay. the, the the yuck that I'm sitting in is my own because it's my car. But you know, it's like if that I I feel like this summer is going to be the drive-in summer. You know, that's going to be my wife and I going out and watching some drive-in movies. Right, just you know, just kick that seat back, kick yes. your steering wheel, dear, and yeah, get your little blanket on and do it. That's yeah. Visit visit concessions because I mean, absolutely help out the local um the local businesses. You know, right. you know, it'd be nice if a if a if an urban city like Toronto could find somewhere maybe to put a drive in because that'd be nice. But mm -hmm. at movie theaters right now, yes, at this moment as we're talking, yes. There's Abigail and Abigail. there's Civil War. Civil War. Yes, I think um, Abigail's winning this war between the two movies. Oh, That's I love this premise. Hold on, let's watch this trailer. Yes, let's do. You all came highly recommended. <laughs> you know the rules. Hello, Jean Carlos Pacito. No cell phones. So whose kid is she? A very wealthy man who's about to be $50 million poorer. I'm here to make sure you're safe. What's your name? Mine's Abigail. You can call me Joey. Do you have any kids? I have a little boy. See you in 24 hours. <laughs> do you know what a pinky promise is? If you behave and do as we say, my pinky promise you. Oh, oh. Joey? Yeah. I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. I'm right. Ooh. What the fuck? Shit, we gotta get out of here. I think she knows something. Guys. Guys. Guys! <laughs> Kidnapped a fucking vampire. <laughs> a ballerina vampire. <laughs> okay, how do we kill a vampire? What are we talking about? Like an Anne Rice or a True Blood? You know, Twilight? Stake through the heart. Daylight is a big one. All right, let's go kill us a fucking vampire. Ready? What can I say? I like playing with my food. Whoa, whoa, whoa! She's fucking flying! Yes. Uh huh. Stream, theater. Um. Okay. So speaking yeah. of that's that's what I'm bringing up the drive-in. I just found out that uh, um, I'm pretty sure it was because I looked it up a few days ago. One of the drive-ins has a double feature, and it's Abigail in Civil War. And oh, I planned yeah. on seeing it last week, but it kept raining last week, and so you don't go the drive-in in that. Um, that one drawback. Um, and so hopefully this week or next week I plan on doing that. I'm excited for that. So yeah. Theater. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, but only because it's a double feature with the with the uh, next movie. But yeah, I'll, I I mean I'll give it to you right now. I I think actually I was wrong before. It is a Civil War in the lead, mm -hmm. and King Kong. Okay. Well, and but 
but it's I was in the lead yesterday. Okay, so it, they flipped. But the uh, thing, I, the thing I love alone is just the premise because um, this is a uh, there. It's a technically like a remake of a 1930s Dracula's daughter, mm-hmm. and it's you know, but it, but like the the retake of it of like oh hey, group of criminals uh, kidnaps you know, a powerful underground you know guy's daughter to to milk him for ransom. Come to find out that daughter is a vampire. Um and shenanigans ensue. I love it. Okay, such a fun like horror premise, and uh, she's a, and she practices ballerina because she's a little girl. <laughs> Why not? And it has Giancarlo Esposito, and it has Kevin Durand. Uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, for me, uh, who I would be looking for if I were to see this, I have I'm I'm undecided because I've never seen a vampire horror horror a vampire mm-hmm. horror. Mm-hmm. thriller film like <laughs> yeah this man just created his whole new genre okay this is this is beyond dracula this is this is dracula on 10 um but if i did decide to see this it would be to see angus cloud oh angus, angus, angus cloud is good he is he a does. good that's a good actor yeah he's a good actor and you know i i got into him because i was watching euphoria as people were mm-hmm. A lot of people were and you know just hearing about his passing i remember that i was like oh my god well, uh, how are you gonna continue but I'm, I'm happy that he was able to get in some additional work and we could and like posthumously we could appreciate his his talent as an actor because it, it deserves the it deserves recognition you know and yeah this this movie this feel of this i don't want to say warmth but this mm-hmm. Dracula, this horror comedy vampire thriller film, just feels something that would be like right up his personal alley. Yeah. So, and it's right up my personal alley because that sounds fun as hell. I, I mean, it sounds fun, but it also looks gory. Yes. And he, 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 you hope it's funny. So, and they're referencing other vampires. So, is so it, that tells you it's a world where they know what vampires are. Because, I mean, it's almost played out of whenever it's like, oh, there's a vampire film, but people have never interacted with a vampire before. Kind of like, oh, it's a zombie movie, but it's like no one's ever interacted with zombies. So you have to see them learning in real time how to kill uh, or or how to stop or prevent, you know, an attack from that thing. So this right. one's saying like, hey, what what do you what, what are we talking about? You're talking about Twilight. You're talking about uh, I um uh, and Rice. You're talking about uh, 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 True Blood. Like, what kind of vampire are we talking about? Which is wonderful because it's saying there's variations and we don't know which one. Oh, the vampire yeah. family tree, right? So it's fun. Uh, it's it's fun because that's a that's a horror movie genre you don't get is people that have seen horror movies. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so because that, it's so uh, that's fun. And what I ever like, I mean, not to mention just the idea of hey, guess what? I, what if you were just you know hanging out with friends doing this thing, and then you realized you were in a horror movie? Isn't that every day? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> have you lived? Are you living? Right alive did you go outside <laughs> that feels like an everyday thing for me but well i, I mean well I, 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 that's why we when we talk about civil war that's gonna be a little bit closer to home for me so uh, i mean okay yes mm-hmm. i definitely see what you're saying um and here's civil war this is um this is going to be my my country in two years all across america we just try to stay out with what we see on the news seems like it's for the best d24 citizens of america the so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? We're moving to DC today. We need to go down there. They shoot journalists on sight in the Capitol. Every instinct in me says this is death. What if? Every time I survived a war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Well, you're American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? 
You don't know? <laughs> the Western Ooh. forces will reach the White House on July 4th. Oh my god. Get in the car! Get in the car! Move, move, move! We're gonna hang back. Ooh. I'm not hanging back. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go, 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 go! God bless America. Ooh, ooh. I get it. Oh, that seems like fun too. I get it. I definitely get it. This is uh this is definitely a theater watch for myself. That looks like a theater watch, doesn't it? I might I might do a double header. I might do a double header. I feel like it just yeah. needs that. I, I I it's not so much that it's the cast, it's not so much that it's the director or even the story. it's more the storyline for me. I feel yeah. like that that story, that particular plot line it needs a big screen in order to just get the gravity of the message that's being... and, and for what i've heard um uh this movie is being praised for um some of the most realistic uh urban assault uh warfare like footage that you that you've seen in a while like right uh some report uh people like reporters who have been in actual like uh situations in urban warfare like shooting bombs going off stuff like that they say civil war is the close it's pretty close and i it looks like kristen dunst does an amazing job at saying welcome that. back Chris, or kirsten kristen kirsten 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 welcome back kirsten i don't yeah. know where you've been but i mean we missed you glad you're back i'm a i'm a dunst head i'm a big dunst fan I I can't call myself a lunstand, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then we I also can't. have Nick Hofferman. You have Jesse Plemons, which I mean, if we're gonna talk about that guy actors that like, uh, um, kind of like a, a Walter uh, Goggins is. Yes. Whenever whenever you see him in a show or see him in a movie, you're gonna be like, oh oh my god, I'm excited for that part of the movie that they're gonna be in. Like right. that that's a Jesse Plemons. Okay, well, I, for me, then, if we were talking about that guy, it's Ragnar Mora. It's, uh, where is he from? I don't know where he's from, but he did, he did, um, he's a very well-known Latin American. Latin. Ah, that's, okay, yes, he was a, he was a Narcos. Narcos. He played Narcos. Pablo Escobar. That's where he, I know him. He did do Pablo Escobar. He did a great job doing Pablo Escobar. But what I liked he did. Him most was Elysium. I just feel like he's a strong actor in whatever role he chooses to play. So. Oh, yeah. And he is the type of person where you give him a script that is meaty in the sense of where we're talking about subjects that are not sexy. Mm hmm. They're not fun. Nobody wants to talk about the uh, impending uh, civil war. And obviously, I'm just going to say this movie is taking place in a fantasy world where obviously Texas and California get along. That's not realistic. So don't worry. This is obviously a high fantasy movie. Yeah. But no, but he he's just he he is that he has the type of skill that actually makes people sit back and listen. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. pay attention to what Pablo Escobar was all about. Yeah. Because of just how well he portrayed him, and he played him so well, and that sh and Narcos was such a good, the, one of the best examples of what it was like back then, and and how I mean, this time we can talk about Pablo Escobar for a while, but but it's uh, but it was a great show that showed the weight of how much he could, I mean, the playing, the, like, oh, the acting he did for that is wonderful. Yeah. Do you feel like whenever he came on, it, it was like the first time you saw Darth Vader appear on screen and you're like, oh, oh, that's a bad mother effort. Like, I'm not gonna mess with that guy. Like, that's how he walked out as Pablo Escobar. Like, he walked out like, like you were just like, <gasps> like, right. he's about to do something. What's he about to do? You know, like, and so he plays that he had he's he's able to carry a scene like that, like carry the you know, that. And so I'm excited what he does in the Civil War. Well, he definitely carries more than a scene, but I, I mean, like you give it, you you give it to him, and he's, he's just he's gonna be like, oh, okay, I have this thing in my hand. Well, let me reshape it and give it some more meaning. <laughs> Let me breathe life into it. And it's here, <laughs> you know, he's like one of those types of guys. So yeah, 
I mean, and like when this movie came out at South by Southwest, it, like the reviews were all positive, and it it had a re- it got a really really good deal. I think either it had the distribution deal before going into South by Southwest, or right there it just they were just like we must buy it type thing. So it looked- <laughs> here's a blank check, write your number. We will have <laughs> right. this. This, I mean, this is one of those films that could have easily gone to streaming and still done well. But the fact is, it they just it was decided to release it theatrically, and now it's it's in the number one spot, beating out uh, Godzilla and King Kong. So, like, hot damn! And I mean, is Abigail Civil War going to be the new Barbenheimer? I mean, I, C- C- Civil Gale? What are we talking about? That is what I was thinking. Uh, Abba War? Abba War? No, that sounds too much like... (laughs) Okay. Us marketing geniuses are going to get this. We're going to figure it out. Hold on. We're going to crack this. Obviously, we're... Abigail War? Mm. There's, you know, in the writing, but Abdel, Bill Ab. Ab War. Abba War. (laughs) Regardless. Yes. Gilstiff. Let's go. (laughs) There we go. You know what? Double feature, baby. That's a night. Make hey, that a night. Double feature yourself. Abigail and Civil War. So I, I, here, toss it out. That'll work. There we go. That's what the movie's about. And you know, you could probably watch Abigail and Civil War in the time that it would take for you to watch one up Oppenheimer. So yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, Oppenheimer. Was, yes. Okay, we're gonna do that. But these two movies seem like to be the movie of spring 2024, which uh-huh. I'm actually excited about because Oppenheimer was great. It was a biopic, kind of in a sense. It was a, a based on a true story. Yeah. But these could possibly be based, well, in Civil War's case at least, could possibly be based on true stories. Yeah, two years from now. Yeah. It's very fictional, you know? It, they're the movies that you could just get lost in. They're the movies that you just want to go watch to see movies. It's world building kind of like, let's get lost yeah. in this world. as you, yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I, I just need to chill. I need to kick back. It's been a hard week or it's been a hard day or whatever. Let me just watch this and like, turn my own personal life off of and i, and I think let me unplug and then z- yeah. like zone in for an hour and a half two hours to enjoy this thing exactly and i and i think yeah. what um i think that's what most people want to see when they go to movies like or, or read a book or consume any type of content they want to be entertained they want the story to be good they want it to be um encompassing or you know just take me out of my own it's it goes back to not every film has to be on the linear path of is it crap is it oscar award winning yeah movies are are visual stories and us humans for millennia we love to hear stories get lost in stories you know learn a lesson from stories you know just be entertained by stories doesn't matter Right. And watch a good movie, watch a good story being told by really great actors doing their really best work. Oh, it's it's like it's like being told by good storytellers. Exactly. You know, a good writing, good directing, good acting, all of that just unfolds and it's a good worthwhile fun time. Exactly. And this is why I when I saw this article come up um about Brian Cox critiquing Joaquin's Phoenix <laughs> This is <laughs> uh, I laughed. I was I was I was I doubled over in laughter because I'm like, this movie and his performance had so many people divided. Like half the people were like, Oh my god, it's crap. And what was he doing? Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the the reality just was not there. And then the They and sound the, very French. A lot of French critics. Yeah. Right. And then Or you could just say the French. Go ahead. No, I'm not saying the French because I'm more afraid of the French than I am the Swifties. But, we, yeah, yeah, both right. <laughs> Same but, numbers. Yes. Um, but and then the other half was just like, oh, this is a masterpiece. He did wonderfully. Like, yes. And, but Brian Cox does the and, you know, he, he his claim to fame is succession. And um, I would say Brian Cox's claim to fame has been around for decades uh, before we got to uh, like uh, succession. But yeah. For me, it was succession. I, 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 I didn't get to know him as well as I did until I saw him play that character, and I was just like mind blown. But he's always been a very outspoken man, apparently. Oh and yeah. He spoke his mind. He said his piece of what he felt with jo- Joaquin, um, his performance was like in in Napoleon, and it's just been a battle of the two back and forth. 
since he said it. And it's just like, wow, he's allowed to have his opinion. Is he right? Okay, you know what? I feel like this this isn't Brian Cox just throwing shade. Yeah. I mean, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. We know that he can bring the thunder with that, Which is, and I was excited. I, I'm going to be out there again. I still haven't seen Napoleon yet. Um, but uh, we all know Joaquin Phoenix can bring it. No one questions that. And, right. and I think it's more like Brian Cox, in a way, saying, Joaquin, you've been in better things. Like, I don't know what Ridley Scott was up to, right. but y'all didn't talk very well enough to, to portray this well enough. No, he was saying, he was saying, Joaquin, you've done better. Mm-hmm. And this was so bad that I know that if you had given the role to me, I would have done better. Like Roy Cox is like twice the age of Joaquin Phoenix and is like, hell, I would have done a better Napoleon. But, but, <laughs> you know, Which, by the way, I'm sorry, can we get that movie too now? Ridley? Can we do like, I would watch, I will watch the original Napoleon. I will watch Brian Cox's Napoleon. And I will, uh, that's a, that, that's a double feature, baby. All right. That's what the studio needs. No, but I'm just saying, what actor do you know says that publicly? Do you know what I mean? Like, we they they may think it. Did did Brian Cox it, be like, how did that little shithead win? But no, fun. But you know, it's a private thought. That's an inside thought. Like, no, no. My imagining is that Brian Cox just finished watching the movie in his like at his home turned it off, got up into his armchair and immediately called a publicist and was like, I got some notes on this movie, you know? And like, how did he, how did Brian Cox's opinion get out? Like, was he walking through a crowd of uh, paparazzi and then like the Napoleon movie came up or whatever? Like what, what happened? How did, what, how, like, cause whenever they say shit like this, it's like, when, how, you know, where I was think- the microphone? Who what- was there? <laughs> With Brian Cox, it usually happens is that he's doing a long, drawn out interview about something else. And this is probably just happened to come in as the topic. And the guy is so freaking unfiltered. It's just it probably never even occurred to him to be like, you know, like Brian Cox, Brian Cox, gonna Brian Cox. OK, and it's just like the timing of this, because the Joker is coming out soon, too. It's just it's like, wow. Like, OK, OK. Is this like, yeah, ramping up to worry like to, to the Joker, too, where it's like, yeah, I wa- yeah, guess Joaquin, you know, like Brian Cox isn't going to be like, I could have played a better Joker. You know, <laughs> like this apparent in his opinion of Joaquin Phoenix's performance is taking is being taken so seriously that as there's people from the Napoleon outfit that are just defending Joaquin like no it was great it was wonderful uh-huh. <laughs> don't hurt his feelings type of thing we all loved it the world Which, brother, I want to encourage period pieces okay I don't care if they're historically inaccurate they're anachronistic like didn't happen exaggerations blah 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 yeah. I need more period pieces okay I don't mind the period piece. I just yeah. like period pieces with um like with better storylines. No, better like what is not better than Napoleon? Like Napoleon Bonaparte? Like seriously? I got to I got to write a, sh- a kids short story telling this the, the story of Napoleon uh, for a school I used to work for. So like I got to know like Napoleon's and I'm like my god that was a whole freaking thing. Like <laughs> I mean if talk about Napoleon you're like damn what a yeah weird time in european history that that created what did he not do right crazy um, but i don't think it the the period piece aspect of it was terrible i don't but there was apparently beyond joaquin phoenix's performance some historical inaccuracies that people are like well you know that shouldn't have made it then at all Uh, it's it's because the hollywood is full of celebrity everyone's saying well brian cox has said that Joaquin Phoenix's performance was truly terrible and it made the movie appalling and everyone's just looking at that headline but I don't, I just want to see you two battle it out on the stage like just throw shots at each other back and forth that's literally Which, can all we do watch. that can we have like a like a rap bat, like an act battle where like y'all just do different Napoleon monologues and then we'll just see who was the better Napoleon was it Joaquin or was it Brian whatever you know? like give me that like they they these two have been going back back and forth at each other like brian cox and he said and joaquin said something back that was a, a little um he said something back it was it was it was out there and okay you know, it just got real personal between them real real quick and <laughs> <laughs> but two I mean, magnificent actors just getting emotional and, and just getting right. messy but that's what you want to see in addition to good acting you want to see people who actually care about their craft and these yes. two really do you know so 
which again i think there need like the what was the the old uh, um animated series uh celebrity death match there should be you know like act off you know where it's <laughs> you just see like okay let's get two classically trained actors in here doing the same monologue of the with the same character but right. in their own like the way they would do it and hell yes i would watch that Right. Because as an audience, we're always going to look at it and be like, well, I like this guy. And somebody else is going to be like, well, no, I like that guy. The other guy was shit. Whatever. Yeah. Give us that. Give us that talk. Give, give us, us that a controversy. Talk. Okay. That is what we're here for. To <laughs> and I want to see how you do it. And I want to see how the other guy does it. And Yeah. I can't tell you which camp I'm going to be in, but you know what? I'll, I'll figure out real quick during, uh, during that, the act off. Exactly. And, <laughs> and scene. You're right. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and obviously Brian Cox is allowed to have his opinion. And yeah, they're all allowed to have their opinions. I was rebuttaled. And I'm, I'm and, actually I'm actually for this. I'm kind of for um, I don't care about B, C list, you know, OK, decent like uh, so, uh, celebrities having their opinions. I care about a list like like renowned, good actors and performers talking smack about each other like you can do better. And like well, I think you do better. This ain't it, you know. But the, with the Hollywood roundtables, where they get together with the group of actors and the group of directors and the group of producers, and they all talk about their craft and those different um, stories or the different movies and products that they're working on, it's yeah. kind of like that. But it's nicely done. It's polite. It's civilized. You're like, well, this was my experience on this set, and this is how I felt about the work that I did, and. Mm -hmm. it's and then there's like four or five other of their counterparts just all coming in very supportive and like this is what happened and brian cox said no fuck that model <laughs> <laughs> you sucked joaquin listen if he's gonna get good he's gonna get good. <laughs> and, okay but it, it's not even like it's competition at this point i wonder I mean, he's like whipping a pastry over at phoenix <laughs> like be better dude i i felt like you could have been better and i'm not even gonna be nice about it but it's just it's you it's know like you like joaquin you could be our next day uh, uh daniel day lewis okay but i need you to straighten up a little bit okay right. choose your movies better it's what good actors <laughs> good colleagues and good counterparts this is what in good work buddies or whatever um yes uh, this is what we're supposed to do for one another push each other to make each other better or and you know I, what? E even better, even better idea. Because I still want to see this. What if we we get a buddy cop film and it's Brian Cox and Joaquin Phoenix and they're both playing Napoleons, but they're cops and yeah. they have to solve they have to work together to solve yeah. this crime spree. But the Napoleon they're, they're both like dressed as Napoleon in modern day and I, they just have to go and deal with it. You know what? Let's do it. Come on. I'm 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 scared. I'm literally <laughs> scared. <laughs> I just say talk. Okay, like you know telling he could have said it nicer but he said it the way he said it he said it in such a bright he, said, he said he's an old man he's yeah, you don't I'm, give a shit i'm not he gonna don't give a shit is it i'm an old man i'm definitely not hating on him for that but i don't i just don't he think picked it. up a landline call and called the publicist okay like let's be honest it just gets printed please <laughs> tell him it was me <laughs> 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 but regardless of what he said and how he felt about it his true feelings about it him saying something about how he felt another actor could have done better in this yeah. is not it's not unheard of it's not unknown it's just no the way he said it he said it in such a successional fashion that it had to grab headlines and like you said call his publicist See, yeah and walk in phoenix but, fuck off <laughs> <laughs> that came from me yo that came from uh -huh. me you have a problem brian cox me... <laughs> brian t cox clang <laughs> <laughs> remember this <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because Do doug lyman did actually kind of the same thing when he wrote that letter to the amazon or he wrote that open letter about the amazon studio execs um deciding to street like have a, a streaming release for roadhouse yes, for roadhouse yes you know, having a theatrical release for roadhouse so that was him saying yo honestly the industry the industry could do industry, better the nerve of it make sure that amazon knows that i said it type yeah thing. <laughs> And they're like, who, who is this again? I'm like, no, I, 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 I've directed some things. I'm, I'm, not, I mean, I'm not as big as Brian Cox, but I did it. I'll see you at South by Southwest. Okay. Yes. Hang up. Look, look for me. I'm wearing the green shirt. Bye. 
you're, you're back. <laughs> but it was okay. But regardless of you know people being very outspoken about their opinions. Speaking uh, of opinions, um, <laughs> I'm going to say I I Roadhouse. just watched Roadhouse last night. Okay. And this is two, three weeks after I watched the original Roadhouse. So I have both still fresh in my brain. And I'm going to say I've heard a lot of complaints about this movie. There's a lot of complaints to be said about this movie. But if there's one thing that it did not fail in, it entertained. That was fun. Okay? Where some, uh, where it was a UFC-backed movie let's let's watch some of this trailer again i know Before we watched we it start, in the past do you have insurance what your coverage good like you have dental oh haha -ha. is there a hospital nearby is it like too far I, about like 25 minutes i'd say uh, uh, my favorite character I by the way is that guy on the right, right. What? Yeah. <laughs> so you like to fight you ever win no one ever wins a fight <laughs> This ain't the holiday in, pal. I, I'm, I'm moving. A friend of mine suggested I come talk to you. I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. Lately, it's been attracting the wrong clientele. I can pay you good money. Judging by your car, you need this. Well, I like my car. Think about it. Come on, bro. I know who you are. Elwood Dalton, big fan man. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Tell me about this fountain. Yeah, it's all nice, like he's Mr. Rogers or something, but then he'll haul off. Ah! Really Ow. interesting guy, overall. <laughs> Rand wants to take the roadhouse away from me. He wants to build some resort. I should warn you, people have a certain way of getting things done around here. Hey, fellas. Looks like you're having a smacking night. Dalton! I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Come on, bro. Let me guess. You're gonna threaten me? Tell me to get out of town. I get the impression that you can't be threatened. Once Knox is on the job, it's over, baby. It takes a lot to get me angry, but when I am, I just can't let go. People seem a little aggressive around here. Is that one in front of yours? No, I just broke his arm. <laughs> so you watch your Fast and Furious movies because you want to see some high speed car shenanigans. You go see a Godzilla movie because you want to see Tokyo get redecorated. You go to you watch a Hallmark movie because you want to see a big city somebody hook up with a small town somebody. You know, you, you go to these movies because you know what you're going to expect. You're not looking to think too hard. You're looking to be entertained in a certain style. You watch a Roadhouse movie because you're expecting to see some serious, haul-ass bar fights. And that's what this movie provided. Um, could you poke holes all through that storyline like Swiss cheese? Absolutely. One flaming thing could be that it all takes place in Key West, and Key West is going to be underwater in the next five years. So none of the, so them fighting for the rights to this bar and all this other conflict with everything is moot. But you know what? I didn't watch it because I, I was going to be captivated by a gripping storyline, you know, and a whole lot of character development. I watched it because... Um, as 1989's Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze was, it's turn off your brain, watch some fights, fun. And this is just a modern retelling of that. And that's exactly what it was. I was not disappointed because it went in with zero expectations. I was like, I hear there's going to be some fights and Jake Gyllenhaal is going to look ripped. And I was satisfied in that. All of them, like, check yes fights, check yes uh, ripped guys. That was exactly what I expected, and I actually um, liked a couple, a number of characters in that uh, movie. I mean, like I said, is it a good movie? No, but it's not supposed to be a good movie. It was supposed to be a fun movie, and I was entertained. 
satisfied. Okay. Okay. So, in your opinion, yeah. Since we're just talking about you know actors' performances and everything, who did it better, Jake Gyllenhaal or Patrick Swayze? I think two very different styles, to be honest. Yeah. Two very different Daltons uh, that they were playing. Um, I'm not gonna say one is doing a bit because they were. These are two different directions in the movie that those two movies went. Um, right. The 1989 Roadhouse is limited by the toxic masculinity that was rampant in the late 80s, early 90s, and sexism and everything. But they still, oh but but Dalton, but I know. <gasps> Good thing we got rid of that. Um, yeah. But uh, but then he was also played like a, a philosophical, you know, um, uh, fighter. You know, it's like a fighter. He's not a usual fighter. He thinks things out. He knows what he's going to do, and he's really good at it. And he, you know, and then he fights. Uh, he's like, I don't like to kill people, although I have in the past. And you know, so there is some similarities between the Daltons, um, but still taken in two different avenues. I could I I could you know point to I couldn't point to either one of them. And say one did it better. Okay. I think they played the Dalton that need to be played in each movie and very well. Okay. Well, I mean, I watched it as well. And I have to yeah. say, I do like what Jake Gyllenhaal did. I, I did find it entertaining. I thought that his fight scenes were really, really well done. Yes. And um, the ones between him and Colin McGregor were freaking epic. Yeah. Um, oh, they. I mean, as you'd expect to be, because Conor McGregor is an actual professional fighter. Right. Um, and, and the way Jake, I was, I mean, and the fact where you're like, okay, you're going with a pretty actor who's not known for fighting. And right. then you have an actual fighter not known for acting. And right. you're like, is one going to be able to pull the punch right? You know, and I, but you know what? I mean, the way they were throwing those punches, kicks, throws looked really good. J- Jake Gillenall, he, he, he handled his business there and he looked like he was doing what he was doing for real. He uh, looked and he whooped. Yes, he did. He like <laughs> he played in them. He could have actually he did his job as an actor. Yeah. However, did Colin McGregor do his job as an actor? Because he's not an actor, I'm willing to just like set the bar just a little lower for him. Yes. You know but what? I I just don't know <laughs> if he was directed to play his character the way that he did. But other than the parts of when he was fighting, I found it really just like, why is he on screen? Like, the, I, what I, I mean, obviously uh, the, um, the, the director of this movie was, knew who he was working with. He was going to be working with a fighter who was trying to act and you have to play to the strengths. And when it comes to character development, they were like, hey, Connor, be a human T-1000 that just does whatever you feel like. And you're also like psychotic and and have no limits. Go. And then he just be, he just became this like a like almost like a comic book abomination. Like I'm just going to wreak havoc as I progress, you know. And like I'm gonna get in this Ferrari and go 130 miles an hour because I can. Like every time you know, and like or every time he walks in, which by the way, Connor McGregor looked like he was just flexing for the entire fucking like every scene he was in. He looked weird and deformed and like just like walking around like this and everything. And you're like, what what are you what are you doing, man? But but you know what if you for the simple fact of, of like, if I just think of him as a walking T-1000, just destroying as he walks along because he can, because he's a psycho, you know what? Fun character. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, I'm going to, I expect him to, um, to take off and be in the next, you know, be in the next movie with Brian Cox or Joaquin Phoenix. But I think for his role in this room of, Ro- of Roadhouse, of like, he just needed to play a psycho that was good at, uh, that just loves fights. And but- you know what? He played that character. You put it in a different perspective for me because if you, when you put it in that context, I can accept what he did. But before yeah. that, I was just like, "What is he there? What is he there for? <laughs> Why is he doing it? Like, what is that look on his face? Could he not do any other look? Like, I was just like, did they direct him? And obviously, it just looks like he reached the limit of his acting ability, and they gave him something that was easy to accomplish to get the lines out because the main important Lipar. thing for him wasn't the lines, it wasn't the dialogue. It wasn't even the action. It was the fights. They needed the fights. And that's yeah. what this was sold. And that's what this was, whole thing was predicated upon. And the fact that they took it and they rewrote it into an MMA thing. Like, and he's the biggest MMA fighter there is out there. Deservedly. Arguably. Yeah. 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 They just did what they had to do. But as an actor. I mean, am I expecting him to be in the next movie? No. But 
I would hope but not. did I but did he do what he needed to do for this one I'm like yeah sure the moment the only moments where I was like what are you doing is when he's not being a psycho bull like bull in a china shop running through a situation whenever he's calmly having a conversation that throws me off sometimes and then he starts throwing things calmly around in the back I was like what calmly having a the first scene this man is what uh, there will be spoilers if you haven't seen this you, you stop now okay mm -hmm. um the first scene the man is walking out naked through a village like there there is no calm like he, no 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 it's it's whatever he's uh, like uh, he's uh, he gets to Florida and he starts talking to to like the boss's kid and like having conversations with him that's when he that's when you just get just like your talking is weird go back to just being a weird psycho that flexes and then punches things and then he does and so you're like okay well you're fine again <laughs> I, I honestly think you're being very generous with your opinion for me the the bar again again because it was entertainment and i wasn't expecting to be blown out by the acting but did I enjoy the acting that I saw? Absolutely. I mean, Post Malone, which is commonly uh, occurring now in this episode, uh, Post Malone was in it. I think he did a great job in it. Um, Jessica Williams, I loved her, like her role in this one. I think um, uh, Daniela Melchior, Melchior uh, who played Ellie, the girlfriend, I feel like she got buried in this one a little bit. Like, we didn't get enough screen time with her, enough story time with her, and then it kind of just... I, I feel like she got a little wasted in this one, but I mean, other than that, I mean, I mean, um, was it Arturo Castro, the guy who played Mo, the guy that got his arm broke, and he was like the funny talking one. I liked him as a character. Yeah, that one, had, that guy had a little bit of character development. But again, I came into this movie wanting to be entertained and see some fights, and I was, and I can't fault it for for the other things than that. Like I was entertained. It definitely wins on the fights. One thing yeah. I want to say about Post Malone, um, he was great. Even that he, little, even he can do more. He, I, he, had, he was freaking great. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like Post Malone but, is a musician. He is not an actor. Okay, but I, I've seen him in a couple of the things when he was acting, and he actually can. And I'm like, damn, Post. But, and I'm saying, if you're going to cross over, mm -hmm. at least have some semblance of an idea of what it is that you're there to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring some depth to it. You know, it just some reality. And Connor went on the fights. For me, he definitely won on the fights. Everything else mm -hmm. is like, why? And the only reason yeah. why that works to his credit is because by the end of the movie, I just want to see Jake Gyllenhaal's beat him up. I literally just wanted to see Jake beat And just and throw, was, knock out, throw yeah. down, fight yeah. that just lasted and traveled and moved and progressed. And yeah, I was, it did it. I was happy. I was happy. I was happy with that. I was happy, and if that's one thing where you could say, well, Conor McGregor did his thing as an actor beyond the whole fighting thing, it was just that he was just so crazy, psychopathic, and <laughs> to me that yeah. he, he was he was he was the classic villain that you wanted to see lose. Yeah, and and were you not entertained? <laughs> were, you know, was I, it fun? I, I, well, I, was I entertained? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's it's it. I have to give. I will. I will be a defender of dumb movies that are meant to entertain. Like you I, know, and I would. I, they, it like was said. I mean, there's something to be said of like, yes, I love a good storyline. I love a good unfolding, like we talked about earlier. But then there's also love a good cheap fun. You see a Godzilla movie? Hell yeah, I'm down for it. No, you know what? It wasn't like it was. It wasn't dumb. It was. It wasn't yeah. dumb. It was just very, you knew what you're in there. Like you said, you knew what you were watching that film for. You were watching yeah. it for lighthearted entertainment and the fights. Were we entertained? If you were there for the fights, yes, you most definitely were. Yep. So, I mean, on that on that part, I'll just, I'll, I'm just going to end it on a good note, give it on a positive, because I really respect yeah. what Lyman did. So, yeah, I'm know what you're getting into. You'll have a good time. Exactly. Go see some fights and go watch a human T one thousand terrorize uh like the cities a bunch and neighborhoods. Of people, a bunch yeah. Of people. <laughs> That's all that it was. You go have fun. You will, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> on that note, mm -hmm. uh I just like I, I, I think we've given a lot of thoughts and a lot yes. of commentary to a lot well, of different Things that are out yes. have, and that have been recently really released, and I'm thought out at this point. But I I'm would out of thoughts. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, but <laughs> I would appreciate hearing the thoughts and commentary from other people and what they thought about what we just talked about and, and the projects that are um, we felt highlighting. And so just leave a comment. Yeah. Like. Yeah, let, let us know you're here. If you liked it, say it. If you didn't like it, say it. whatever you got, man. Let us know you're out there. Right. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. You don't even have to watch us. Just like and subscribe. Disagree with us. Right? Yeah. It's <laughs> time. <laughs> Again, tell us your ideas of what Kill Bill 3 can be. and We, we, we gave you the premise. Right? Or, you know, what? I, how about the, the buddy cop between Brian Cox and Joaquin Phoenix? And they're b- both playing Napoleon detectives. I mean, that tell was, me if I'm wrong on that. That was Jerry's idea. I had nothing to do that with it. That is 100% me. Yeah. Let's write this. Yeah. It's <laughs> anyway, it's been lovely. It's been fun. Jared, good time as always. Andrea, always a pleasure. All right. Later, y'all. Bye. Critics. <laughs>